Welcome back all. This video is going to be taking a look at an automatic boring and facing head. Um, I've just spent the last couple of days uh, stripping and rebuilding this unit um, which was a pretty frustrating process. Um, I didn't really have space on the bench to uh, do any filming and I would have had to edit out an awful lot of swearing. Uh, this thing was uh, a bit of a pig. Uh, the tolerances in this thing are very, very tight. And some of the gears uh, have to go in in a certain orientation uh, to cancel out um, the small amounts of run out. And none of the gears in this particular example were marked and it was so stubborn about coming apart that I lost the positions when it came apart. So, for instance, I reckon I had one part of the mechanism apart about 50 times before getting everything back into a position where everything was, was nice and smooth and free running. Now this is a Japanese copy of a Wolupta uh, UPA3 boring head. Um, this one is made by, uh, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Mitsugochi. And a rather strange feature of it is the German example is, of course, uh, metric. And you'd think that a Japanese item would also be metric, but in fact all these little uh, screws, and I think uh, a lot of the other internal components, are imperial threads. In particular, I was missing the gib adjustment screws, which should be a dog point. Uh, couldn't get dog point screws, uh, so ended up buying over length um, cup point and modifying them to dog point and shortening them to a suitable length. Uh, these are a very expensive um, item if bought new, and even the um, Taiwanese copies are several hundred pounds. And I believe I found this one on eBay in Canada for probably around $100. It was a few years ago. And then got a quote of about $100 to have it shipped to the UK. So had it shipped to one of my American friends for, I recall, about $15, who then forwarded it on. So I'll zoom in and I'll show some of the features and the operation. We're looking at this side of the uh, the head. We've got locking screws uh, for the tool holders, the two gib adjustment screws, and the locking screw. And the locking screw locks simultaneously the slide and the lower adjustment ring. And I'll perhaps cover why it has to lock that um, later on. There's a scale around the bottom of the adjustment ring uh, which reads out in thousandths of an inch uh, on diameter. Uh, one revolution being of, the, of this ring being 40 thousandths. And I don't know if it'll show up on camera. Let's try zooming in. But just here is your zero fiducial and a little vernier scale uh, which gives um, graduations of half a thousandth of an inch. On the other side of the head are the two adjustable trip dogs uh, for setting your travels and the stop pin. This is the feed um, engagement knob. So in for feed to be engaged, just pop it out for disengage. There was a official forked tool, which I don't have. So at the moment, um, turning the top ring does nothing. If I find the right position and get the feed engaged, now turning the top ring turns the lower ring in the opposite direction via an epicyclic reduction. So obviously if the spindle is powered, the top ring is driving the lower ring and is traversing the head. 
and when it hits the stop it'll pop out the feed so I should be able to demonstrate that Okay, you can hear the sound change as the feed disengaged. And we can see we're up against the stop, the button has popped out, and we're not driving. If I turn the, this around, you can see there's a, another button up here. And what this does, it locks the top ring to the lower ring. So it no longer gives that reversal and there are only three notches in which it will drop. There's one of them. And this also gives a rapid movement because of course um, the two rings are now locked together. They're not getting the speed reduction, they're not getting the uh, direction reversal. And that just tripped out. And we can see we're back against the other stop and ready to repeat the feed operation. And I find that it uh, you need to wind it manually off the stop. Um, I've got the, the, the last control here is an adjustable uh, spring uh, for, for the uh, feed knob that sets the pressure it requires to disengage the feed and I've got it set a little low at the moment so um, the, the force with which it's driven against the stop unwinding that requires a little bit more force than the uh, the trip is set for at the moment but then we can perform another feed operation. Once again against the stop. I'm going to reset the head to uh, more or less symmetry. Now the reason that the uh, locking screw has to lock the slide, which would be conventional practice on a boring head, and this adjuster ring is kind of irrelevant on, on my machine uh, with a VFD where the motor ramps to speed. But uh, with a direct online starter where the acceleration is quite abrupt and particularly at higher speeds, you have the possibility that the rotational inertia of the adjustment ring would actually mean that starting the head would cause this ring to stay stationary briefly as the head accelerated and actually try and adjust the slide. And locking the just the slide 
with the mechanical advantage that the adjustment ring has got may not be sufficient. So the screw pushes on a ball bearing. The ball bearing uh, pushes on the uh, a rod that locks the slide. And both ends of that locking uh, pin are angled. One is angled to match the angle of the gib. The other is angled so that a ball bearing um, sitting between it and the locking screw is going to push the locking rod forward. The ball bearing is going to get pushed up and that pushes a pin upwards so it locks the adjustment ring as well as the slide.